everyone, it's Mandy from Designs by Miss Mandy, and over the years I've found myself designing all sorts of branches and floral elements for both graphics and paper crafts. So today I thought it would be fun to go through a few different tips and tricks with you as I share three different ways to design a wreath. So let's get started! As usual, I'll be working in Adobe Illustrator, and today the main tools I'll be focusing on are the ellipsis tool, the pencil tool, um, pathfinder tools like Unite and Minus Front, the Outline Stroke Tool, and the Pattern Brush Tool. As you can see, I've already created a few different design elements for my wreaths. Um, I did this quickly using my pen and pencil tools, so be sure to check out my last video if you're interested in learning more about drawing within Illustrator. Alright, before we get started on the wreath designs themselves, let's get a good base for our wreath designs laid out by creating a nice circle on each of our artboards uh, by using our ellipsis tool. Just for a second, I'm going to hide all of my branches so I can um, easily center all of my um, circles. And your ellipsis tool can be found over here in your toolbar or um, just by hitting L on your keyboard. And I'm just going to copy this first one I made and um, and then drag it over to my other artboards. Okay, perfect. Now that I have those, I'm going to start on my first wreath. For this one, we're going to do what I call a layered wreath design. This is going to look the most organic and natural, and there are numerous ways that you can go about creating a layered style design. So to keep it simple, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pencil tool. Um, shortcut for that is N. I'm going to, I want it to be the same color as these branches. And um, now I'm going to just make kind of a loose intentionally not perfect design that goes all the way around a few times. Okay, maybe that was a few too many. Let me try again. Anyway, you can play around with it and decide if you like that or keep trying until you get something you do like. Um, I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Now I'm just going to add my branches. Let's get this long one in here first. And I'm just going to position these wherever I like and whatever seems to make sense. I think for this one I'm just going to do a quick kind of asymmetrical design. I'm just copying and pasting these and then positioning them around just to get kind of a fun organic feel. Obviously I'm just doing this pretty quickly so um, you can take your time with this a little bit more and really get things exactly where you want them. We'll call that good for now. Now I'm going to add my floral elements. Um, before I do this I'm going to show you how I got that white background. It's pretty simple. Um, I just took all of the lines that I created and copied command C, paste in back command B, and then I used my eyedropper tool to make a white background, and then go, went to Pathfinder and selected Unite. The reason I'm doing this, I'm going to group these together, the reason I'm doing this is because if I didn't, um, then, well I gotta put this in front, um, then you would be able to see all of my branches and lines poke through my little rose design. 
and I don't want that. I just want them, I want it to be blocked out, so that's why I'm including a white background. Maybe I'll add a couple more roses up here. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty cute. Once you've got your wreath to a point that you like it, you can um, get rid of this circle that we used. It's just kind of a directional piece. And I think we're good on that one. Looks nice to me. All right. For this wreath, I'm calling this second method the reflected wreath. It's pretty simple. I'm just going to take this branch that I've designed. I'm going to position it on my circle. Now I'm going to hold shift and option while I drag my circle out. And I just want to make sure it's big enough that it encapsulates all of my branch design. Once I have that done, I'm just going to hold shift and select my branch. With both of them selected, I'm going to um, hit copy, command C, paste in front, command F, and then I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees so that the branch is reflected on the opposite side. Now I'm going to hold shift again and select my other branch and repeat the process. Copy, command C, paste in front, command F, and rotate again. Make sure you hold shift as you rotate so that it stays uniform the whole time. Okay, and if you're happy with it, you can leave it like that. Otherwise, I think I want my branches to be touching each other. So I'm going to just shift this up a little bit and start that process over. It takes some playing around and tweaking sometimes, but once you have your wreath to a position that you like, you can delete all of your outer circles. Scale it down to where you like it, and you're done with that one. For the third wreath, we're going to be making a pattern. So you'll notice that I've left the branch design straight for this one instead of being curved. Also, if you're going to use this method, you'll want to make sure that your branch is horizontal like mine and not vertical. Alright, so what we're going to do for this one is access the brush panel. So that's either going to be on your sidebar over here, or if you don't have it, go up to Window and select Brushes. Then simply take your um, branch and drag it over to your brushes and select Pattern Brush. We're just going to hit OK for now and use all the default settings and go back and edit those later. Next, select your, select your circle and click on your new brush. And then your branch will automatically curve and replicate itself to fit your shape, which is awesome. If you don't like how it looks, you can double click on the brush you created and you can play with this little um, scale slider to either increase the scale or decrease it. Make sure preview is selected or else you won't see this happening. Um, and it'll automatically increase or decrease the amount of branches that your um, pattern creates. So it's really nice. Um, I think I'm going to leave it with four like this. I think that looks good and then just hit apply to strokes. So there you have it, three different ways to design a wreath. Now, as a bonus tip, I'm gonna go through each one and show you how you can turn each of these into a compound shape that you can then easily use as a cut file for your Cricut or a Silhouette machine. Starting with the first one, um, I'm going to go to Object, Path, Outline Strokes. That's going to be pretty much the first step for all of these. Um, and whenever you're designing a cut file, it's always good to just uh, remember that you design back to front. Um, let's check out our layers. So this is already a compound path. We don't need to worry about it. Since we did our branches next, let's select all of our branches because they're the next ones in the layer. And with our um, wreath design selected as well, we're, and all of our branches. One more. Come on, it's right there. Um, we're going to select Unite. It's always good to check back on, um, at your layers panel to make sure that it, it captured everything you wanted it to. 
Now I'm going to ungroup all of my rose designs, select just the white layers, and hit Command 8. And that is going to um, make these a compound pack. Then with those selected, I'm going to sh hold Shift and select um, my wreath and go to my Pathfinder tool and hit minus front. That is going to delete everything behind the white shapes that we didn't want included. Finally, I'm just going to select all of it and hit Unite. And if you did everything correctly, then it should look how you want and um, turn into a single compound pack. Um, using my white arrow selection tool, I'm just going to clean out this little area right there because it's kind of tiny. Maybe this one too. There you go. And that one is ready to go. This one is super simple. All I have to do is, with everything selected, go to Object, Path, Outline, Stroke, and then while it's still selected, hit Unite. Since all of my branches are touching each other, that's the only thing that I had to do, and I didn't have anything overlapping that I needed to deselect, so that one's good to go. This one's going to be fairly similar. With the whole thing selected, I'm going to go to Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. I'm getting used to this yet. Um, but then I'm going to hit that one more time, um, just so I change all of my outlines to fills. Um, and since my branches aren't touching each other, first I'm going to ungroup them. And since they're not touching, um, I can easily change this just by going to Transform and going to Scale. I'm going to change it to 105% and hit OK. And then do the same thing with the other three. This is just making it so that, um, as you can see, now the branches are all overlapping at least a little bit so that um, it will all come out in one piece if I were to cut it out of paper. Okay, then with them all selected, you can see I went to my Pathfinder window again and hit Unite. And there you go. And you can always test to make sure everything looks right by kind of dragging it onto your gray background and making sure that all the places that are supposed to be empty are indeed empty. Um, that's kind of my quick way to check and make sure. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and now you're ready to create a beautiful wreath graphic of your own.